Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of the Neolia Outfitting video series. Depending on how much work has yet to be done by the time that we finish this video, there may or may not be a third part to this series. However, we won't really know that until we finish this, and so with that being said, let's just get straight to it. So starting off from where we left off yesterday, we're going to start with her leggings. And before I get to that, I'm going to hide these and then turn off her leg materials because the dark purple on the skin versus the dark red makes it kind of hard to see where one ends and one begins for uh, clipping purposes. So we're going to select parts of her legs. So it's ID 10 and ID 9. So we'll just turn IDs 9 and 10 off. And then we are going to come over here. This is on the right side. And we are going to start by using the wireframe to approximately fit the legging to her actual legs. And so we will begin by taking these and changing the soft selection to be far stronger than it is currently. And just kind of pull these and then we'll just kind of put these in, use some scale to squeeze these in and get them pretty, pretty tightly fitted. And the details we can, of course, fix in the 3D view. So I just kind of want to go like this. So it's like this indentation on the knee is definitely causing some complexities because the Skyrim mesh has the knees very defined outwardly, whereas the Daz has that far less so. Just kind of go like this. Get this to be an approximate fit. Select this and we'll go to like 36 or so. I have off 24. Change this to be on the cursor. And we'll pull this down. And we will come back here to 12. Pull this down. And we just kind of grab the bottoms here. Pull them down farther. Key, and we want to make sure this does not affect the bottom of the shoe because that will distort the flat surface, which we don't want. This can come in, and this can come out. Something like that. And then this can come in. And then we will set this back to going off the vertex centers. There we go. Something like that. I don't know what that is. And then we'll come over here and do the same thing from this perspective. Like we can see that it's a bit wide basically all along here. So we'll just select all of this and narrow it. Bring it this way a bit, and then we will come through and manually widen everything. So going through the wireframe just saves a lot of energy as opposed to jumping straight into doing everything through the 3D view. You can certainly do it entirely through the 3D view, and depending on the particulars of what I am doing, I have done it purely through the 3D view, but in general, the wireframe gives you really good approximation of the fit and it can get a lot of the work done for you. And so that's why I like to start in general 
with the wireframe. So now we're just going to come and do the 3D view. And now I think you can already see the benefit of turning off her dark skin and letting the default gray come over with all of these clipping. If I were to come over here and turn her textures on again, see it's like yeah, that clipping right there is pretty easy to see, but this clipping I could very easily overlook, especially if I were already a few hours into this session as opposed to where I am now uh, starting on it fresh after not having worked on models for a few hours already today. So now with that being said, we're going to get to the nitty gritty of it. Start cleaning up this clipping. So before I start pulling things out, I'm going to actually push things in and try and get things as close to the mesh as I can. Uh, having this excessive amount of clipping might seem a bit counterintuitive, but it's actually a good place to start because it's a lot easier to see when mesh goes from clipping to not clipping than starting with it not clipping and hoping that you're not pulling it too far. And so if I start with it clipping and then pull it so it's just barely not clipping, then that is a lot easier to fit than the other way around. So I'm going to select her and apply Alt X, which makes her semi-transparent. And now I'm going to begin with pulling everything out. I'm going to lower the soft selection. And we're going to just start at this. So as I'm pulling this out, I am watching these edges over here and waiting for them just to become visible, like so. And then I lower the soft selection even more and continue the process. Just slowly get these all visible. Just going to kind of come around and do this with all of these. So then for this one, I'm going to lower this even more. Do something like that. And then I'm going to come back over here with four again. Do this. There we go. And then I'm going to use polygon selection. Make it even two smaller, set it to two again. Pull it the rest of the way out. And I'm thinking what I might actually end up doing is tessellating this section just so I can get a tighter fit. So let's do that. So let's just select these rings. Don't want those. And then they will come over here to tessellate, which will add more polygons to it, which will give me more precise control when I go through and pull these all out to undo the clipping. So now I'm going to set the fall off back to four. Since now there's more polygons, the fall off, um, does not spread as far. So we just come through here. So you can see how much smaller these polygon selections are. And then you'll see that I am grabbing the intersection of X, Y and pulling diagonally. That is so there is not any uh, bias on any particular axis, but it is instead more evenly distributed across both axes. And this is just a trick that I've picked up over the years, and it seems to give a more accurate fitting than going purely off the axes. And we just kind of come through here. We're just going to stick to pulling, pulling on these polygons. This one, I'm going to actually do this. This one, do something like this. There we go. And then we're just going to come through.
and then I sometimes do use the axes. Uh, the exact moments of when I do use the axes as opposed to just using uh, the triangle, or I suppose in this case more square, the cross between them. Uh, I don't really have a scientific method to choosing when to use one or the other. It's very much an intuition that I've sort of just built over the years of which one would suit these particular needs better. Okay. So pretty good fit before I get carried away. Oh yeah, that's really nice fit. A little bit of clipping down here. See, and then if I have the alt X on, then that wasn't as immediately obvious. So it's always a good idea to turn alt X off sometimes as well. And as well, it's just to zoom out and then go back in to sort of uh, refocus your view from being super focused and laser specific to more general and just looking for holes on a more general level. So that's a good fit. And then we come over here to the shoes. And we do much the same. This. I'm just going to go like this. Just pull those out. Uh, that smoothing's a bit wonky. I'm not liking that. So let's just clean up that smoothing. Just hit it all the smoothing group one. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So that is that legging. We will quickly split that off and then mirror it. So we'll just come over here to detach uh, CDs. Now, is that the same naming convention I've used for the rest? Okay, I just named them those. I can let's just quickly let's just quickly normalize these names. Yeah, I like having a consistent naming scheme across my parts. There we go. Okay, so now we select legging and we go tools, mirror. Uh, first thing we will do is make sure that the gizmo is on the origin. The easiest way to do that is go world and then that there. Now it's on the origin. That is the point around it will rotate. We go to mirror and copy, we're mirroring across the x-axis. And there we go. So you see there's a little bit of a clipping there, we'll fix that. We can come over here and attach this. And then we just come over here, select these, and we'll come over here. Set the self selection, and fix that. And there we go. So that is the leggings. That took about 10 minutes total to do. Unfortunately, that was the easy one. Because now we have the gloves. And oh, good God, is this going to be painful. Okay, change of plans. Not fitting those gloves. 
The reason being I had spent 26 minutes doing so before I decided the quality of the fit was really low and I wanted to do a faster and more efficient way to do it. I then proceeded to record 10 minutes of doing exactly that, but in the process I fucked it up irrecoverably and deleted the arm gloves to a point that we'd have to start over this entire process, including doing the entire last video over to get the gloves back. That was very obviously not a concern, that was not worth the effort, and so we are just going to continue pressing forward. So we start by selecting the relevant arm mesh already done, and then we come to detach as a clone. We will name it Armor Seduce Arm Gloves. We will do that. And then we will select the new mesh that we just made, which is right here. We select vertices. We have our move set to a local across the Z for every individual. And we expand it by 0 0.05, which as you can see, makes it slightly larger. That puffs it out slightly. And then we will come over here, we will add a new material, and come over to Paint Shop, and we will come over here and open the base DAS arms. We will save this onto the desktop as Nuolia Arms D. And then we will similarly come over here to E Drive Tools, Defile, Decompiled. Mine Daz Elves Nualia Nualia 2 Armor Seduce Data Textures Armors That Uh huh And we will come over here to the legs I didn't want to do that I just want the material ID This material ID 4 That is i.dds of course it's a dds i can't open dds so i'll have to come over here open you with vtf edit and then we will export you as soon as it decides to respond thank you we'll just name you leggings as for my sanity's sake and then we'll come over here to desktop load leggings and we're going to use this as a color base so now we're going to come over here and we are going to do hue saturation, completely desaturate it, brightness contrast, do 50 and negative 50 to wash out a lot of the details. And then we're going to come over to adjust blur and blur it to further reduce the details. And now we are going to finally do a brightness reduction of, looks like around negative 100. We could probably even go farther than that. Let's do negative 150. And let's do less contrast. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. And then we will come over here. We will just grab a swab of color. Hit F7 to bring up the color histogram. And we will write these values down because we want to make the gloves the same color as the leggings. So that is 27, 17, 23. Whereas the arms by comparison are 46 across the board. I know it's across the board because it's grayscale. I completely saturated it. And then we come over to the calculator and we compute the differences. 27 divided by 46. This is 59%. 17 over 46, this is 37%, and 23 divided by 46 is exactly 50%. And then we just come over here to the channel mixer, and we put in these values. So this is 59, this is 37, and this is 50. There we go, so now that will make the gloves the same color purple as the leggings. So now we come over here, we come back to the arm, we do material 14, which we just added, we go pit map and have it point to that new texture. And then we come over here to the gloves and we select and apply. And there's our new glove texture. And then we will just get rid of the fingernails. We don't need them. We don't need to worry about them clipping because the final mesh will have the hands 
not actually drying underneath the gloves so that they will deform properly without any micro clipping. And then just like the leggings, we come up here and we do tools, mirror, copy. And then we come over here, we attach and go like that. So in comparison to the 26 minutes of fitting, which had only done the thumb and the index finger as well as the arm, we have instead done less than five minutes and completely fitted both arms with a much tighter fitting and a higher polygon, higher quality arm glove. That's how simple that particular process is. So at this point, I think we are ready to actually rig the outfit. So I'm going to turn all this back on. I'm going to further split this up. I'm going to select belts and we'll come over to detach, not as a clone. It would do to do armor use belts. And that leaves only the armor seduce top. So now I can remove the belts. Everything is its own individual piece. Uh, the hair, I'm actually fairly satisfied with where that hair is situated right now. And so we will go through and get everything rigged. So we're going to select all of these pieces, run script, and we will do a batch skin wrap. Reset marks, mark you all as target, mark you as the source, and skin wrap. So the skin wrap took a bit longer than expected, so I decided just to cut out the long wait, and we're just going to continue on after the skin wrap has finished. So the first thing we're going to do, make sure the skin wrap works properly, okay, is we're going to just quickly make sure that everything moves. So a uh, part of the skin wrap is the cloak and the skirt just try to attach to the legs. We're going to need to fix that, but we intend to fully re-rig those anyways. So we're going to hide those for now. And we're just going to take a look at how everything else deforms. Okay, so I fully expected that need to be fixed. That's fine. Our belts themselves are actually forming pretty nice for the most part. So what we'll probably end up doing is just set the belts fully to the hips. I'd even actually give them separate bones. It looks like I could probably get away with that. So that's something that we will address later. i make sure the calves deform nice. Okay, and then come up to the arms and make sure the arms deform nice. So here, yeah, that deforms just fine, and then the forearm, perfect. So before we get too carried away, we're going to touch up some of the rigging here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to close this, and we're going to tackle the boots, because for some reason... And I don't know why this happens, but it always seems to be the case. For some reason, the back heels always end up going to the toes. Like you can see it there. So that's the first thing we're going to fix. So we're going to go to skin, uh, select vertices, we're just going to select the bottom heel. It will grow like four times. And then we're going to close that. Come over here. We want the right foot. Uh, set weight, and then we'll just grow forward ones and blend it a bit. And then we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing. Foot, set weight, blend. There we go. So now if I grab the feet bones, just come back over here and do it. Should still work just fine. If I grab the toe bone, it shouldn't move the heel. So there's a bit of clipping of the shoe into the foot, but these toe bones shouldn't be used in the shoes. If anything, only these bones should be used. So, and those work well enough. 
that even though it shouldn't really be used too much because of the particular shape of the shoes. So that's the shoes. So now we're going to come up and clean this up. And this is going to be just really simple. So we're just going to select all of it and remove the weights from the thighs. So none of that. And none of that. There we go. So now if we come over here, now it shouldn't move with this at all, which is exactly how I want it to move. And then we are going to run script to transfer weights, aptly named weight transfer. And then we will simply transfer the weights off the control bones on the pelvis because the control bones are there to fix clipping with this outfit, so it wouldn't make much sense if it moves with the helper bones. It would kind of defeat the purpose. So we're just going to remove those and put them to the pelvis where they are linked to. And that is that. So I think that's the only actual corrective flexes needed. So let's do some really simple re-rigging. We're just going to move these belts. Perfect. We're going to move these belts onto their own bones. And so the way we're going to do that actually is we are going to select the pelvis bone. And then we're just going to duplicate it twice. So this will be bipple one belt one as a copy and bipple one belt two, so they're right on top of the pelvis bone. We're going to, okay, they're already linked. Are they linked to the pelvis? Uh, no, they're linked to the hip, which is not what I want. So we select these bones and we just relink them to the pelvis. And then we just select the belts. And we go add bones, show bones. We want to add are those two bones already added? No, I didn't think so. I'm actually kind of interested. Maybe they did go to the pelvis already? I don't think they did. No. There they are. I didn't see them. There's two belt bones. And it doesn't really matter which belt goes to which bones. We're just going to select element. Select that. So all of you can go to belt one. Set weight. And then we'll just invert selection and all of you go to belt two. So now I can come over here. I can grab the belt. Okay, can't pull. But I can rotate them. So now the belts can move slightly. And now since they're no longer having any weight to the thighs, I should be able to do something like this. Just pull that up, and I believe that is belt two. And there you go. So that's how you would animate something like that. As the leg goes forward, you simply rotate or adjust it. Like I could just have the belt go like this. Just have it move up. And then of course rotate it slightly so it sits on your hips a bit better. So it would be something kind of like that. And that's how you would animate that. So let's just go back to before I did any of that. That was just proof of concept. So that's the belts. Uh, everything else should already be linked, so let's work on her face yet, because I did notice when I cracked this open, all of her face is over here for some reason. It was a long time ago that I moved New Holiday to the DAS V2. I'm not really certain what I was thinking when I did this, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix it real fast. So, first things first, I'm just gonna select all of this and hide those bones. And let's see what we can see. So first things first, come over to the skin. Uh, there was those Nualia head bones, Nualia neck, lower, upper head. 
I don't see them over here, which means they must not actually have ring attached to them. So I was like, as it is, if I were to come over here and select her head, select her head, rotate it back, yeah, distorts her face. So what we'll do is we're just going to select all of these bones that are linked to the Nuolia head bone. And we're just going to move them and link them to the current head bone. That one right there. So we come over here and we do exactly that. Now if I come over here and select the head bone. There we go. So now I do want to do something about that. I don't like her having these two neck bones. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to merge this neck upper bone into her uh, neck lower bone and then we're going to just have it be neck lower and head. I think that will work better. So before we get carried away with that, let's save this as 05 because this is going to be irrecoverable we fuck it up and let's just do that real fast so that's really easy as we just select her and we once again run that weight transfer very useful tool i unfortunately cannot take credit for writing it this is one of the few scripts that i found from someone else and i absolutely love it to bits so we're just going to come down here to neck upper and we're going to move it to neck lower replace and then we're going to do the same thing to her hair. Neck upper goes to neck lower. There we go. So now if I come over here, I should be able to bypass neck upper. If I select neck lower, that's looking pretty decent. And then head. And for posterity's sake, let's make sure the jaw still works correctly. And it does. So, you know, the hair is moving with the jaw. That's obviously not right. But we'll be re-rigging the hair at any point. At any rate, at some point. And so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now that is done. Let's start with rigging the clothes. So, we're going to bring... The skirt in first, it will be the easiest to rig. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a trace of bones going down that way. So this will probably be the easiest to rig from the front view. So I'm going to select the existing bones and hide them so they're not in the way. I don't even know what that bone is. I think that's one of the Skyrim bones. Yeah, I don't need that. Uh, you got any other such bones? Let's just clean up the skeleton real fast and see if there's any uh, bones just kind of hanging out. Like these bones aren't doing anything. Any other stragglers? And these bones aren't doing anything. So then I should be able to move these without anything moving with them. There we go. Let's clean up the skeleton a little bit. Okay, so let's add these bones. So before I get carried away, I want to have the first one basically be right underneath the belts. So I can look already, I'm going to end up tessellating it to give it more polygons. But we'll do that. Uh, we better do that now. So we're just going to select the skeleton, or the skirt rather, and select all of this. And we're just going to tessellate, I think, twice. Making it a bit excessively high a polygon, but that just means it would deform all the better. There we go. So that adds more polygons so it can deform more nicely. And then we're going to go create bone. And we're just going to kind of go like this. And I think we will do three bone chains. So there's that bone chain, 
and then we're going to do one along the edges as well so that the bones can be crushed together for more uh, fluid cloth motion rather than just this whole thing just swinging a, a single piece, which will be a bit on the unrealistic side. So we're going to select those eight bones, and copy them, I'm going to stick them over here, and then copy them one more time, and stick them over here. And that's the way we're going to do this. Now we're going to select all those bone chains and put them into position. So we select them all, because if you look over here, you can see that they're not in the correct place. So we're just going to fix that. So we're going to put the center in the right position. And then we will put these in the right position. There we go. And then we're going to come up here and run another script. This is one that I did do, the bone enumerator. So we will select this chain. So this is front skirt right enumerate. And what that does is it go through and it names all these bones numerically. Then we select this chain. This is the center enumerate. And then we select this chain, and this is the left, and enumerate. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually relink these bones. So rather than being three individual chains like this, I am instead going to link them like this. And so what will instead happen is this will move all three bones. And then these can all can be tweaked individually. I think that's the way I'm going to do this. This is a rigging scheming I don't really use that often. And it may end up not being the best scheme for this, but we'll see how it behaves. So, you know, if it doesn't work, it's not like it's that hard to restore the original chains. There we go. And now we're going to let 3ds Max do the rigging for us. And so we're going to just take the selection that we already have made. Interesting. And then we're just going to detach this. This is skirt auto rig. So now it is a separate object without any skin attached, and we're going to apply a skin. And we are just going to add all of these bones, and that will have it automatically rig for us. Can't really see it because of the dark colors. You can see more over here in the vertices. And then what we're going to do is we are going to select all the vertices. And then we're just going to use the hotkey I made for blending weights, which is Shift B. And we're just going to blend all of these weights once. And the reason for that is so that it will deform a bit nicer. By default, the auto rig makes it all extremely rough, hard edges. By doing this, we instead give it a nice bend. Yeah, I think that'll actually work really nicely. So there we go. So now if I rotate this one, you'll see that it's very rough. But these next ones will be very smooth by comparison. So now I'm going to copy both of these. This one's auto-rigged, and this one is skin-wrapped, and this one is automatically rigged. And then we're going to hide the bones. We're going to select the original skirt mesh. We are going to collapse its skin so it's no longer rigged. And then we're going to attach the original auto rig, which is the second piece. Then we're going to apply a skin wrap, change it to face deformation, and set these parameters extremely low and weight all point. So this is a high precision rig. It will do an exact copy of the existing weights of what I target. 
and then I target these duplicates, which are exactly identical because they're duplicates. So we do that, and it's extremely fast skin wrap. Convert that to skin. Delete the duplicates. I don't need them anymore. And then we come over here, and we select all of these vertices along the edge, and we weld them. So now it is all one piece again. If I select my element, select the whole thing. And if I go by weights, we can now see that they sort of blend. And then we can finalize that blend by going like this, grow, and then just blend, blend, and blend. Now I can select these and make sure everything is deselected. And there you go. Now the whole thing deforms nicely. It's got a little bit of clipping here, but you know, that could be fixed by simply pulling it forward a bit. There we go. <coughs> <coughs> so that's the skirt rigged. Now let's lock these. I'm going to assume these are rigged to the pelvis. Let's just double check that. Oh yeah, yeah, they're rigged to the pelvis. Sometimes skirts can be actually linked to the spine bone, but in this particular case, that is not what happens. So we're just going to select the skirt and we get straight to the pelvis. So we come over here and lock it to the pelvis, and there we go. So that's the skirt done. Now let's do the cloak. Cloak is going to be a far more interesting beast. So we're just going to hide these. We're going to bring these back. So let's take a look at the skirt or the cloak rather. So I am seeing five chains. I'm seeing a bone chain that goes like this, straight down, one that kind of goes like this, one that goes like this, and then the same on the other side. That is what I'm seeing, so that is what we are going to do. So we're going to flip this to the back, and we are going to change this cloak's color so it sticks out more and let's start with making that bone chain so we're going to start right here and we're just going to kind of go like this and we're going to see how that looks once we actually but get the bones into position. So we're going to start right here. And then we are going to rotate. I'm going to change this to 2.5. So I have a bit more precision. So now we can see that this bone needs to be stretched out a bit more. And so we're just going to delete it and we'll create another bone. And then we'll see how that looks once it's rotated. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll create another bone just off the tip of that. And fix that rotation. Uh, 90 degrees. There we go. Just for the tip. There we go. So that is one set of cloak bones. And now we're going to have another one 
it goes like this and sort of sweeps out. And then the last one that goes along the edges, which will basically be a duplicate of that one. This probably will not be able to be a duplicate of this set. We'll probably have to trace it along this way, which will also be interesting. So uh, for the moment, I'm going to hide these bones so they're not in my way. And we're just going to trace this way. So we come back over to Bone Tools, and we start right there, and we just sort of go like this. And let's see how that will look. So we start by bringing this first bone, oh yeah, it's going to be way too short. And then bring you along like this. Yeah, it's way too short. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale these bones. And this is extremely dangerous. 3ds Max does not like scaling bones. So we'll go something like that. And let's take a look at the previous bone chain. Two, three, four, five, six bones. It's not really looking good. I think what we're going to actually do, rather than that, is we will see if we can jerry rig the initial bone chain into that sweeping chain that we want. So we're just going to duplicate these bones. We're going to move this over here, something like that. We're going to kick it up a little bit. Then we're just going to sort of rotate it like this. And then see if we can actually twist this set of bones into more of the shape that we want. Just some casual rotations. And I think we actually can. Yeah, that actually works remarkably well. Yeah, okay, that'll work. And then we will do this once again. Whoops. So we'll duplicate these bones again. And then we just come over here. Set this bone like that. Get it more strongly along these edges, and I'll also sort of fix this. As I like to have the points just barely poking out of the mesh. That's generally a pretty good sign that it will deform nice if it's in that sort of position. And we're just going to basically have. This just trace the outward shape of the cloak. Yeah, something like that, I think. Beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take note of this X coordinate. Actually, I don't even need to take note of it. This is actually a really simple operation. Because we are going to just Duplicate these bones. Come on. Where's the copy? There it is, bone 22. And we're just going to flip its X coordinate. And then we're just going to adjust the rotations. And just adjust this so it follows the new flow. And this is actually the process, a very, very similar process to rigging hair. It's the same sort of process as followed. And when we get to the hair, which will be shortly, you'll see exactly what I mean when I say that. It's a very similar process. We're just going to rotate these bones. 
Oops. I suppose I should go through and make sure all these are rotated correctly. So I sort of want the green axis to be basically along the normal of the cloak so that when you rotate it is sort of making sense and fitting the cloak. Something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to plunge this down. Bring that up. And then we select these bones and do the same thing once again. And so we copy these, and that's bone 29. 29. And we will just mirror this over. So I don't use the actual mirror tool that's in 3ds Max. There is, you know, that we used for the uh, boots and the gloves tools mirror. I don't use that on bones in 3ds Max because it has this bad tendency of using uh, negative scales to achieve its effect. And 3ds Max and scaling bones, as I said, does not really get along very well. And so the fact that the mirror method uses scales and negative scales at that to achieve its mirroring, there can be undesirable side effects that come about if you use that on bones. And that's just something I've picked up. It's something that I've read about because I ran into issues with it, so these strange issues, and you go, oh, did you mirror the bones? Well, yeah, I did. Oh, that was your first mistake. You should have done that. And then this is something I've learned to avoid. Okay, so there is the cloak. All traced out. Now we're going to rig it the same way we rigged the skirt. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually select the cloaky bits which are all of these. We're going to tessellate once. So see that makes some really nasty creases because of this. There we go. Actually, if I just turn that off all together, there we go, that really reduces it. There we go. Okay. And then we're just going to Select all of that. I don't really know why I deselected it, honestly. Like that. And then we're going to, as I go up a little bit more, a little bit more. Not going to include these. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to attach this to cloak on the rig. And then we're going to select cloak auto rig. Apply a skin. We're going to attach all of those bones. Select. And we should probably actually name those bones. So let's name those bones. So you, we're just going to Come over here and run bone enumerator script again. Select chain. So you are cloak right two. You're the outermost. You are the innermost right. You are the center. You are the innermost left bones. Actually, you know what? I got these numbers rever I got these reversed. These are actually the right bones. So let me try that again. Right, right two, the outermost right. You are the innermost right. 
you are the innermost left. It's because I'm now facing the same direction she is. Her right is the same as my right. Oops. There we go. And left. There we go. So now we've got all of those. And now we're going to do the same thing. Select all vertices. And then just use my blend weight hotkey, shift B on all of these bones so that they deform nicely. The hotkey just makes it so much easier than doing it by hand. And then we once again select both these cloak pieces, copy them, select the original cloak, collapse its weights, attach as list the original auto rig, skin wrap its high precision skin wrap again, and skin wrap both pieces, convert to skin. Collapse 2, and we just come over here, I don't know exactly where the split is, it's somewhere over there, and we just weld them all, so now they're all one piece again, get rid of the duplicates, and then we just come along here, we we'll just select along here, and we will blend. All of these again so that they blend more cleanly. Actually, I'm going to undo all that. And I'm just going to select all of it. And then we're going to, going to do that blending again. And the reason I redid that is I noticed that I actually had selected right along the edge, and so the blend was not correct. There we go. So now I can select this, for example. It goes correctly. So now for this, I'm going to keep these control bones as separate chains. It's not really a clean way to do it, unfortunately. So it's like if you want to, for example, or clone slay, you sort of have to select all of them and go like that. But you can see that makes a really nice effect, and then of course you can hopefully this will actually rotate correctly. Yeah, there you go. And so you can have really nice swishy effects by just rotating like that. And of course, you know, you can have her cloak come up, go down. So there you go. So there's the cloak, nice and rigged. Pretty straightforward job to do. So next up is her hair. Let's rig her hair next. But just about out of time. We've got about an hour's worth of content right here. And so I think what we'll do is we will pick up next time with rigging her hair. So what we will do is we will link these cloak bones to her chest, which is spine four, right over there. So there is spine four. So right there. Okay, I can't do it all in one swipe, so we're just going to move these bones over. Link them. Just kind of select all these bones and rearrange children. So the skirt bones are cloak bones are properly put in the right position. Okay, so that is today. What we managed to do is we managed to fit the leggings, resolve the gloves, skin wrap everything so it all moves properly. In fact, we can 
quickly test that. Let's come over here and select the arm. Yeah, there we go. And then the legs. There we go. So we got all of the outfit skin wrapped, and then we went through and manually rigged the skirt and the cloak. So we now have some custom clothes rigging going on. Uh, next video, we will rig her hair, and then we will get everything into Source Filmmaker. So I'll go through the process of converting the textures, uh, building the compile file, and getting everything compiled into Source Filmmaker and debugging all the issues that result therein. Uh, depending on the time and the quality of her existing flexes, assuming her existing flexes even work, I'm pretty sure they do, we might end up building her new flexes, but I cannot say for certain right now. So for now, that is definitively what we will do in part three, as we will rig her hair, and then we will get her into source.